Ze hebben misschien wel veel jaren op de teller. Uitgerangeerd willen ze zich niet voelen. Dit is Koppen XL. Welkom. I'm just very surprised that I'm still alive. My stay guru is Kate Moss. Life's too short. You should always get a rehearsal. We've had a long life. We work darn hard, and we're not daft. Our legs might be gone, but our brain's not gone. Er komen al maar meer bejaarden en hoogbejaarden bij. En de woonzorgcentra die hen moeten opvangen wanneer het niet meer gaat, die worden volop bijgebouwd. Maar willen zij dat wel? Want ook zij hebben hun trots. Ook al betekent dat dan soms een dagelijkse strijd tegen het isolement en de eenzaamheid. Every morning when I'm on the bus coming into town, I glance out and I see the word Leslie Barlow and I mutter under my breath, uh, not today, Leslie, I haven't time. Not today. Net als in vele steden overal ter wereld worden de bewoners van het Britse plaatje Klekten al maar ouder. De helft van de 75-plussers woont alleen. Ook de 84-jarige Doris. My husband died. So the car had to go. The dog died of shock. And I'm on my own. And I'm at the end of the road. <laughs> the times I've heard that. Christmas Eve, I blow them kisses. The only time. We must make the most of what we have. And by the time we reach Clacton, we're very often not very complete. Good God! Oh dear, someone's... What you dropped? It's all right, I'm all right, thank you. Is this what you dropped as well? Yeah. Haar leven is een dagelijkse strijd om niet geïsoleerd te raken of in een verzorgingstehuis te belanden. That's very kind of you. I nearly lost it. Do you think you're right? Ze heeft geen kinderen en leeft van een staatspensioen. I'm so lucky. Two pounds, twenty, forty, forty-one. Fancy that. You can't blame me, can you? I look at my legs, especially the one that's damaged, and I say, come on. You're my servants for the day, and we're going out walkies. We're going walks. We're going into town, and you're going to take me. Oh. Is it difficult walking? Well, yes and no. It varies according to the weather. As it's drier, it's not too bad. As mum used to say, I don't think they want me up there yet. I'm not good enough. Leave it five foot high. Do you want one of these, mate? No, I'm good. Doris. You sure? Sorry. Yeah, I'm sure. That's lovely, thank you. A gentleman said to me, I've never seen him before, are you aware you're using odd shoes? I said, yes. Oh. Are you aware your socks are odd? I said, yes. Those legs and feet are both uh, in trouble and they have different requirements and they're different sizes. Oh. That has to be a big five. That can be a four and a half. He said, you shouldn't be on my bus. Oh, where should I be? You should be in a hospital bed. I said... Do you know it's not possible to obtain a hospital bed? There's none left. That's why I'm at home and I come out every day for food and my requirements. Oh, sorry, mate. 
I prefer to be independent and manage for myself. Because as we get older, with our bits and pieces broken off, with wear and tear, our requirements vary. And it might be a slow process, but you know yourself what you need and how you need it. <laughs> but, um, no, I haven't reached that stage yet. I may, of course, but not yet. I'm very, very happy to be home. Doris koestert haar privacy en wil niemand in haar huis. Maar op haar leeftijd moet ze oppassen dat ze niet geïsoleerd raakt. He's an enigma, I guess, because people know him, but you don't see him. He's old, white hair, beard. Um, he's always got a big coat on, so I guess he feels the cold quite a lot. I'm not normally a reclusive person. I'm a bit of a chatterbox. I could sit down there and quite happily tell you my life story, but I know it wouldn't be very... Um, Entertain, you know. <laughs> Probably get screams, you know. <laughs> That's one of me a long time ago. But you cover a scouser in a suit and tie. And the defendant. <laughs> Gosh, I think it's about three months. Yeah, the last time I've seen him. Because I'm in and out all the time, you see. I've got my mum two roads away and I, I take her out, as, you know, so I'm always on the go. What sort of life do you think you need? <laughs> Lonely, I think. I don't know, I've never seen a apart from who calls to see him, you know, and they're not there long. So other than that, I think he's on his own. It's just him, you know, with himself, I don't know. He doesn't see his daughter now. Heel wat ouderen voelen zich gevangen in hun eigen huis. Francis is twee keer getrouwd geweest. Hij heeft 15 jaar de wereld rondgereisd als ingenieur in de kopvaardij. Dat was een heel lang tijd. Ik heb een watch. Ik heb een sleep, maar meer like dat met de neer. Ik zou zeggen dat ik op de top van mijn game was. Dus ik had een goed job, nice clothes. Lots of friends, you know. The Beatles, 1963. I was at sea then. I'd have been 22 nearly. Just buzzing. You know, a culture of all kinds. All the girls had the offices and ran about town. They'd all head for the cabin, you see. And you'd be there all tanned because you were a seaman. And nobody had tans then. If you had a tan, you were different eye candy for the girls at the time. Because it wasn't bad looking anyway, you know. Life's too short. Sheer elegance. But is it? Is life too short? Yeah, it is, it is too short. It should be a rehearsal the first time round. Then you should come back and say, right, you know what it's all about, behave yourself. And then you should have a second go. This should, you should always get a rehearsal. Because I know I've made a complete mess of mine. That's my granddaughter and my grandson. That's my daughter. Karen, that's my wife who died. Well, my daughters were seven and three. I had to give up my career, yeah. I was quite happy, you'd see. Sure don't know what's around the corner.
Suppose I thought old oh, people used to pull the curtain back, sort of nosing them. I think we used to call them curtain twitches and things. And nosy old so and so's, you know. But I certainly realise now why they look out the window. Because they're looking to see if life is really still out there. I sit here totally isolated from every other human being on this planet. Stabbed, shot, we shot out of our lives, right opposite the church. Doris is al meermaals overvallen op straat en voelt zich niet meer veilig. She's had a bag taken, a purse taken a couple of times. And the last time she was pushed over and left lying in the gutter and she was taken in the hospital where she stayed for a couple of months. I went to see her in hospital. Oh, she looked terrible. She's bruised all over. She couldn't walk out of frame. That's better. It is known that elderly people often growl. Well, as a dog growls, thank you, love. As a dog growls, in self-defense, don't come near me, don't come near too near. I've got problems. This is my life, and I've got to protect myself. While she was in hospital, things went missing, and she couldn't find them when she got back home. So, somebody taking advantage of a single old lady. A care worker who stole 87-year-old's life savings. Just disgusting. Doris probeert niet te veel stil te staan bij haar situatie en heeft een beproefde uitlaatklep gevonden. If you are burdened, set it down, pen to paper, address it to someone you respect very much, or as the Lord himself, and then burn it. And that's a very good way of avoiding sickness. Otherwise, known as give it to the Lord. Don't carry your burdens. No, I give up. Try to get up. Kitty woont al 44 jaar alleen in een sociale flat. No. I've got uh, a can opener. It, it isn't usually as bad as this, though. I usually can manage. Yeah, I've got it. It does get lonely sometimes, even though I like living alone. You could get so lonely that you could cry. Kitty is ziek. Een van haar buren bezorgde haar zoveel stress dat ze er een maagzweer aan overgehouden heeft. The worst thing was when um, they tried to set fire to the flat. I think that was the scariest bit. And where were you when they were doing that with the fire? I was standing in the hallway because I tried to reason with them. I suppose it, it frightened me more than anything because we'd all be burned. I was shocked, yes. I didn't think it could happen to me. I thought I was bulletproof, that nothing, nothing could get to me, but it did. I just had this awful pain. And then uh, my neighbour upstairs, he called an ambulance, and the surgeon told me he only had three minutes 
to uh, operate. He didn't think uh, I would make it after the operation. But uh, I fooled him because I did. Getting ill when you're older makes you think about, uh, you know, how long you'll still be around. Doris werd anderhalf jaar geleden ziek en heeft het nog altijd moeilijk met wat er toen gebeurd is. She was taken very seriously uh, ill. Uh, and so when I heard that uh, Doris was in hospital, in view of the fact that obviously she was uh, very, very poorly, I, I genuinely didn't expect her ever, ever to come out. But she did pull through and uh, lived to tell the tale. I don't like James Undoors. I don't like living like this. But the police, the authorities, the welfare, doesn't matter who they are, they expect you to live like this now. If you try to report anything, they say, what's the age? 80-ish? No, it's imagination. Don't take any notice. They club together, whoever they are. I mean it. You're out. They're not on the side of the elderly. They think it's our imagination and it's because we can't cope and uh, all sorts. But, of course, very often it is the truth we're speaking. We've had a long life. We've worked darn hard. We've had to stand alone for many years. And we're not daft. Our legs might be gone, but our brain's not gone. No, we're right there. I know. I had withdrawn some money and I had put it in a plastic bag when I was carted off to hospital. I See, I don't know what went on in that place because until I came back. It's a tremendous relief after you've done what you should do for the day to go in, shut the gate and shut the door. And then you can stand there and give a sigh of relief. And in the morning, your word of thanks is getting light. Thank God I've been safe all night. Doris lag drie maanden in het ziekenhuis. Toen ze thuis kwam, was haar huis zonder haar toestemming leeggehaald. Haar huis was uh, a real muddle because of her state of ill health. She wasn't able to do very much. Nor did she want many people to go into her house because I mean, I mean Doris is a proud woman. I should think it was pretty um, uncomfortable for her, really. Older people struggle to achieve a certain standard of cleanliness and throw out all the, all the, the tins and the cartons with their jolly old best-before dates. They probably wouldn't be able to see the actual dates anyway. Do you worry that if you let someone in, you, that, that they might want to take your home away from you, Joyce? One reason I'd rather remain alone and put the lock on the door is because my way of life might not be readily acceptable to anybody who thinks they can repeat, report it and insists that I have care and attention that I don't wish to have. Losing my hair was very sad. It really affected me. And when I came out of hospital, it, we cut it really short, and then it grew a bit and grew a bit uh, thicker. And will it ever come back? No, no, it won't go back now. So I just have to take care of the little bit I got. My style guru is Kate Moss. I, I always, and she says, if you're not sure of your colours, stick to black and white. So that's what I do. I follow Kate's advice. But you're less interested in attracting the opposite sex? No, no I'm not really less interested in attracting the opposite sex. I, I like the company of men, and I like them to think, well, she isn't so bad for 84. 
So I'm quite pleased when people say that to me. But uh, that's as far as it goes. I have no designs on them. I'm quite happy being single. That's my uh, Kate Moss coat. I wear that in the summer. My underwear hasn't changed at all. There's me bra. That's me bras. And this... Uh, well, these are my pants. So you like nice underwear? Yes, yeah, yeah, I do. Even though nobody sees it, I like to feel the touch of silk or nice cotton next to you. Even when I was younger, it was important that you have, always have nice underwear. They don't realise that because you're 84 or you're 80, that uh, how good nice underwear makes you feel, how good it makes you feel. Because uh, deep down you're the same person, aren't you? The years might be there, but you feel the same. You feel the same about your body. So uh, to cover your body, you've got to have nice things. Francis' zijn dochter en kleinkinderen zijn verhuisd en hij heeft een telefoonnummer niet. Hij vraagt een vroegere buurvrouw, die onlangs geëmigreerd is, om haar een boodschap te geven. Ah, uh, hallo, dear. This is Frank, Karen's father. I haven't spoken to her for about six months, maybe. Tell us if we get about our differences, you know. If you could just say to her, can she ring me? And that way, I can get her proper number, a landline number, if possible. No, I can't text her, because they haven't got a computer. Or a mobile. I don't have a mobile, see. I'm glad you settled in there, because lots of people, they go there, you know, and then they find out they miss the family back home. Zijn dochter heeft hem niet teruggebeld. Kitty, haar lastige buurman, is uit zijn flat gezet, maar ze sukkelt nog altijd met haar gezondheid. 29 steps. When I see people in wheelchairs, I just think, there but for the grace of God go I. That's the bathroom. And that's my chair that they put in for uh, to have a bath. And it's got all the little ears on. You press them and the chair goes down. And this is this thing here, it's a blue nuisance because it's so big you, you uh, fall over it. This is the bedroom, but it looks more like Steptoe's yard. At the moment, we're all uh, in the throes of packing. I hope to go someplace where there aren't any stairs. Some of my statues are going to a care home for statues. People keep giving them to me, you know, when they die. They, I inherit them. And this little fella, he was given to me in the hospital. I talk to everything. When I'm going away, I say goodbye to all the furniture. And when I come back, I say hello to it. So I suppose really I should be. I should be put away. If you didn't move, what would happen? I suppose I'd stay here till I couldn't stay any longer and then it would be the care home from there. I was in a home for weeks and I got away. I got out. I taught myself to walk again because I was getting... I couldn't walk, I didn't want to walk, didn't want to move, especially with all those around me, they didn't move all day. 
They were fetched down from the bedroom, had their breakfast, sat in a car, in a chair, and they stayed there all day. I didn't want to get like that. You see, love, there's no hope. I didn't realise how we need the word hope and expectation of life until I went there. But they gradually dropped that. It doesn't matter what the day is, what the hour. They've got a large television, they've got every comfort, and they don't want to shift. So their body becomes limp, miserable, and won't cooperate. Do you believe in God? I've screamed at God here in this house on my own. Because let's face it, when you're on your own, he's the only one left, doesn't he? Smile, smile on your heart is in Smile even though it's raining When there are clouds in the sky You'll get by If you smile through your fear and sorrow Smile and maybe tomorrow You'll see the sun come shining through If you for you just smile Smile by knocking cold I'd reckon that's the record for suicidal people. I don't fear that, to be honest, because it'd be a relief in some ways. The only thing I pray to God, could you make it quick? Because you can't... I tried it before. It's hard to swallow a hundred tablets with water. Smile, what's the use of crying? If you can adapt to your surroundings, then you'll be okay. You'll get through life in a reasonable fashion. Don't give up when you think you've only got a certain number of years to live. Go at it full steam ahead. Don't lie down before you have to. Unfortunately, a lot of people do, you see. come this afternoon for a service to a friend of mine. It was very, fairly sudden. She had a fall. It went from there. Apparently she developed pneumonia. And died in the hospital, so I understand. Fairly bad news from most places. Friends in hospital had falls, collapsed. Some of them didn't even know they were ill. So one just carries on as usual. That's the only thing to do. This is the bedroom, but it looks more like Steptoe's yard. At the moment, we're all in the throes of packing. I hope to go someplace where there aren't any stairs. Some of my statues are going to a care home for statues. People keep giving them to me, you know, when they die. They, I inherit them. And this little fella, he was given to me in the hospital. I talk to everything. When I'm going away, I say goodbye to all the furniture. And when I come back, I say hello to it. So I suppose that really I should be. I should be put away. If you didn't move, what would happen? 
I suppose I'd stay here till I couldn't stay any longer and then it would be the care home from there. I was in a home for weeks and I got away. I got out. I taught myself to walk again because I was getting... I couldn't walk. I didn't want to walk. I didn't want to move, especially with all those around me. They didn't move all day. They were fetched down from the bedroom, had their breakfast, sat in a car, in a chair, and they stayed there all day. I didn't want to get like that. You see, love, there's no hope. I didn't realise how we need the word hope and expectation of life until I went there. But they gradually dropped that. It doesn't matter what the day is, what the hour. They've got a large television. They've got every comfort. And they don't want to shift. So their body becomes limp, miserable, and won't cooperate. Do you believe in God? I've screamed at God here in this house on my own. Because let's face it, when you're on your own, he's the only one left, doesn't he? Smile, smile, oh, your heart is aching. Smile, smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, Smile and maybe tomorrow You'll see the sun Come shining through If you for you just smile Smile by Nakin Cole I'd reckon that's the record for suicidal people I don't fear death, to be honest, because it'd be a relief in some ways. The only thing I prayed to God, could you make it quick? Because you can't, I tried it before. It's hard to swallow a hundred tablets with water. Smile, what's the use of crying? If you can adapt to your surroundings, then you'll be OK. You'll get through life in a reasonable fashion. Don't give up when you think you've only got a certain number of years to live. Go at it full steam ahead. Don't lie down before you have to. Unfortunately, a lot of people do, you see. We've come this afternoon for a service to a friend of mine. It was very, fairly sudden. She had a fall. It went from there. Apparently she developed pneumonia. And died in the hospital, so I understand. Fairly bad news from most places. Friends in hospital had falls, collapsed. Some of them didn't even know they were ill. So one just carries on as usual. That's the only thing to do. Press on regardless. Walk on regardless and put your head up. Try not to live in the past because that can have its side effects and bring you down. And if you've got losses, which we all have losses, try not to count them, but to count the blessings. 
which you still have. Now you sit there, little mugs, till I come and get you. I think getting old is a bit like your first baby. I've never had a child, but I should imagine nobody tells you till it arrives how to to uh, deal with it. I wrote this little poem. Um, now I have time to smell the roses, walk through the woods and gather wild posies. Now I have time to say my prayers and not be afraid to kneel on the stairs. The cause of it all is the truth be told. It's simply because I've grown old. I'm just very surprised that I'm still alive. I've had so many squeaks. I've always been accident prone and they've not been my own doing. But I've managed to scrape through and come through somehow each time. There's the registrars. The registrar for what, Joyce? Hey? The registrar for what? Death. One doesn't ever give up, does one? May I be a blessing to someone today, without being a nuisance to them, of course. Het leven als generale repetitie voor wat erna komt, het zou een mooie troost zijn. Ik wens u nog een fijne avond. Thank you.